So next we have uh, Joseph, who's going to tell us about quantum theory in finite dimension, how it cannot explain every general process with finite memory. Okay. Take it away. Thank you. So thanks for the organizer for letting us present uh, our work in the conference. Um, so yeah, if you are more if you're interested in, uh, in our work, you can check uh, uh, this archive reference. But we also have uh, pre-recorded uh, a blog talk uh, for TQC, where uh, Marco uh, Panizza uh, goes more into the details of, uh, of our proof. So this is a joint work uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Marco Panizza and Prof. Uh, Andreas Winter, both of them from uh, Autonomous University of, of Barcelona from the uh, Quantum Information Group. So I'm going to start uh, describing the, the setting of our work. So a uh, basic question in, in PIDEMS or machine learning is uh, how to explain uh, large data with a, with a simple model. So in particular, uh, the setting that we consider is a sequence of uh, observations that can be infinite, for example, they produce by some, uh, in some experiment, where each uh, of these uh, outcomes, these use, uh, they belong to some uh, alphabet that we, cons uh, that we consider that is uh, finite. So, in particular, we focus on stationary process. So we focus on, on, on random processes where these y are some random uh, variables, such that uh, the, uh, the, the probabilities of a sequence of, of, of words that are this used uh, doesn't change uh, uh, for a fixed sequence uh, depending on the, on the time step uh, that we... Uh, uh, that the, oh. that is produced uh, from the experiment. So a question is, uh, okay, given uh, some observations of, of, of some process, can we explain the probability for any words or for any sequence of, of letters of our alphabet via uh, a finite uh, memory system as a hidden cost? And now uh, I will explain in, in a moment uh, what's the meaning of this picture. But in order to, to explain what is uh, causing uh, these, uh, these, these outcomes, um, uh, a question that we have is, uh, what is the nature of the causation? So we have uh, some kind of underlying classical process that is producing uh, these outcomes. There is some quantum system evolving, and it's, uh, we are performing some measurements and, uh, that are producing this, this outcome, or there is uh, something more, uh, more general. So this is the outline of, of, of the talk. First, I will re review what I mean by classical quantum and general linear models uh, for stochastic processes. Then, well, these general models are also known as uh, quasi-realizations, and we explain the, the relations that they have uh, in, uh, with, uh, uh, with cons um, and how they produce uh, positive probabilities. And then the main result of our work is uh, this uh, third point, uh, where we prove that in, that in general, quantum models are, an, are insufficient to capture the uh, general linear models. And uh, the last point, I will, we will revisit an, an old construction by Fox, Rabin, and Bermadikari, and Nat Kearney. Um, about some uh, classical uh, uh, stochastic process. So let's just start uh, with some of the definitions. Um, by, uh, when we mean uh, by, uh, by classical memory, it, it's just a, it's a process that's uh, output by a hidden Markov model. So a hidden Markov model is described by a set of uh, finite states that are unobserved uh, by us, that they are in some, in some memory. Uh, that are these x of, of, of the picture. And what we said is these outcomes that are, that are the use. So in general, the probability of observing uh, a new depends on the state of, of, the, of the hidden system. And also the, 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 the next state of the, of the, of the uh, unobserved system depends on the, on the previous one. So uh, probably machine learning is uh, given the, the sequence of outcomes u, is how to, we can recover uh, the the transition probabilities of the, of the hidden chain. Um, moreover, if we focus on the, on the dynamics of the process, uh, if we have that the probabilities of the world uh, admit a hidden Markov model representation, then they can be explain, ex uh, explained with the, following, uh, uh, with the following items. One is a real uh, finite dimensional vector space. Uh, the other one is a set of uh, non-negative matrices, so we have a non-negative matrix for each uh, of our words of the alphabet, such that the sum over all the uh, words of the alphabet uh, is stochastic. And then we have an a stationary distribution as a, a vector of the dual space uh, of, the, of, of, of this d-bar, and then the, a vector of ones. 
And then we have that uh, we can find all these, uh, all these uh, matrices and vector space such that uh, we can compute the probabilities of a sequence of, of, of outcomes just uh, sandwiching the, uh, this uh, left vector pi uh, with a sequence of, the, of all these uh, non-negative matrices labeled by the uh, different outcomes and, and tau. And this is uh, basically, as you can see, the, 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 what is representing this picture where we are uh, sandwiching this pi and tau and with the different evolutions of the, of the D matrices. So we can generalize this to, to quantum, so uh, to, quantum to quantum memory. So what we have, we'll have now is a, a quantum state that is hidden for us and it will be uh, evolving and will be uh, evolving such that it's producing some uh, classical outcomes and a quantum outcome and then repeated methods on this quantum system where we know that uh, produce a sequence of outcomes. But then the, what the, mathemat the, the mathematical tool that uh, characterizes this evolution is what is called an instrument. So an instrument you can think uh, uh, just a, a quantum channel uh, that outputs, uh, that input that has an input a quantum state and outputs a quantum state and a, and a classical uh, um, a classical state that is that just this use that we observe. And what, it is, what describes an instrument is just a set of completely uh, positive mass that are this U. Uh, such that the sub, uh, the sum over uh, all words is uh, unital. And then we have that uh, given an unknown uh, quantum state, the probability of a uh, different sequence of outcomes can be obtained by the, um, by just tracing uh, the, the, the different maps applied to the quantum state where, in, well, in our world we take the Heisenberg uh, representation uh, where the states are considered functionals. Uh, but this is just because we want to respect uh, the and the classical worlds, and we want to have the order, uh, this U1 order to UL, and not the, and the opposite, but you can just trade the, the transpose of, of everything. If you work on the other representation, instead of being unital, it's just a, a completely uh, trace preserving map. And then since we focus on uh, stationary process, we need to take at the, at the initial state rho as a fixed point uh, of, the, of the sum of uh, the use. Okay. So now we can even generalize uh, more uh, this construction. And this is what is called a, a quasi-realization of a stationary stochastic process B. And it's described now by these uh, following items. One is a, a real vector space. The other one is a, a vector, this tau on the vector space, then a vector on the dual. And then we have a set of uh, linear maps. Uh, we have a map for each uh, word of uh, our alphabet. Uh, so that they follow uh, where epsilon is the empty word and we assign the, the density, uh, where we have this kind of compositions and the product of this, uh, these two matrix correspond to the product of the uh, uh, joint word, so U and B. And in addition, uh, in order to, uh, we, uh, we need uh, the relation hold, so the pi is a left eigenvector uh, with eigenvalue one of, uh, of the sum of the matrices du. Uh, same thing for tau, but, but for the right. And then we have that the probabilities of a sequence of, of outcomes, they can be computed now by uh, P, the, uh, the different products of, of the D matrices as before and, and tau. But in general, uh, we, can, okay, we can find all these kind of matrices that they fulfill, that they fulfill uh, uh, these conditions, but uh, finding the uh, uh, quasi-realization in general doesn't guarantee that, P, that the probabilities of the outcomes are positive. Uh, so, and I will come uh, to this point a, a little more later. So I will just mention now uh, some comments about quasi-realizations. So for those that are more familiar with the classical uh, framework, there is this uh, uh, Henkel matrices such, uh, that we know that if we have the, for example, the probabilities of uh, uh, the exact probability of, of, uh, of some stochastic process, uh, we know that it admits a finite dimensional uh, quasi-realization even only if the, this uh, Henkel matrix, uh, is, uh, the rank is uh, finite where this matrix is construct, uh, is construct uh, as an infinite matrix where each uh, row and, and, and column uh, label different uh, outcomes of the, of the experiment. Um, and then uh, they correspond to, to the probabilities of the joint word. So in general, we can have different quasi-realizations for the same processes and they are called in equivalence, so if they output the same uh, probabilities. So quasi-realizations with uh, minimal dimension are, are called regular. And if we have uh, um, different ones, then they are all of the same process. So they, if they produce the same probabilities, then they are related by uh, similarity transformation. And then what is important about correlations is that the, we can uh, uh, 
So we have compressed all the probabilities in a final, uh, num uh, in a final list of real numbers that are these uh, maps that uh, I described before. And then there is, exists a canonical procedure to obtain a regular representation from the knowledge of this Hankel metric. So if we have uh, these uh, the exact probabilities, we can always uh, build a, a quasi realization. If you are more interested about the classical framework, you can check the, this nice review by B. De Sager. So let's go now uh, to the first model that I, uh, that I explained, the classical and quantum memory. So as I mentioned before, uh, in general, quasi-realizations are not guaranteed to produce uh, positive probabilities, but the classical and quantum models, uh, yes. So for example, the hidden uh, Markov models, they can uh, be thought as a hidden state, that is a probability distribution, non-negative vector uh, evolving through a set of non-negative uh, matrices. So this uh, is what we call uh, a positive realization. And then for the quantum case, they are also named, uh, called uh, the quantum memory, hidden quantum market models. And the hidden uh, state uh, is, a, is a quantum state evolving through a completely positive map. And this is also called a completely positive uh, realization. So, but now for, uh, in general, for, uh, for quasi-realizations, we have a, a, well, um, a, a geometrical interpretation of when uh, they can have a, produce a positive probabilities. So we have this kind of uh, geometrical proposition that tells that, that a quasi-realization uh, defines a non-negative uh, measure if and only if there exists a convex cone on the vector space where the quasi-realization is defined, uh, such that it fulfills the following conditions. One that the vector tau, belong, tau belongs to the cone. The other one that the vector pi belongs to the dual of the cone. And the other is that the maps, uh, the different maps of the, our quasi-relation, they live in variant the cone uh, for all possible worlds. So if we apply it to an element of the cone, it will be again an element of the, of the cone. So uh, we name this, uh, the, the specific name that we use for this concept, they are called uh, suitable. And then uh, in, if we find any of these cones, we can uh, put uh, lower and uh, upper ones of, 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 on which uh, cones uh, they are contained. And these are these this simin and cmax, where the simin is just the cone uh, generated by the orbit of applying the, all the possible maps uh, du for different words to the vector tau. And cmax is the dual of the cone of applying of the orbits of the legs uh, vector pi applied to, the, uh, to all the different possible uh, linear uh, maps uh, du. So, but we, uh, as I mentioned before, we already know that classical and uh, quantum here Markov models, they produce uh, positive probabilities. For, so from the previous uh, uh, proposition, we know that they, they exist, uh, they have this kind of uh, suitable uh, cons, but in particular, they have uh, some peculiar properties. So if the process is generated by a hidden Markov model, then these uh, stable cons, uh, they are known to be uh, polyhedral, so they, are, they can be generated by the set of uh, finite vector, uh, the finite set of vectors. And then for the, this, this was uh, done in uh, early work by Dharma de Cari. And then uh, recently for the quantum case, uh, an analogous characterization was given by the work of uh, Monrad and Winter, where there are some extra conditions, but the, uh, the cone that has to be uh, uh, preserved is um, the suitable cone ha has to be a semi-definite uh, representable. And in particular, the thing that you need to uh, remember about these slides is that the cones uh, that are preserved by classical and quantum uh, models are, uh, are semi-algebraic. So it means that they can be defined through a finite number of inequalities involving polynomials. So we arrive now to the main question of our work. So we define three sets of stationary processes of uh, G, uh, those ones with a finite uh, quasi-realization, uh, P, those with a positive realization of these uh, here Markov models, and CP, uh, those with a completely positive realization of the ones with uh, quantum here Markov models. And clearly we have the following inclusions, P is included in CP, and CP is included uh, on G. So uh, in uh, the early work by Fox Rabin and Dharmadika and Adkarni, it was shown that uh, P was not included uh, in G. So they, fa they found some kind of uh, stochastic process uh, with positive probabilities that couldn't be described by a hidden Markov model. So in this early work, they were talking still about uh, hidden Markov models, not about uh, quasi-realizations. And then I, I will talk a little more about this. So then in the recent work by uh, Monraz and Winter, uh, they, they proved that actually there exists a quantum hidden Markov model that cannot, uh, that cannot uh, be represented uh, by a classical one. 
And it was an open question of this work if uh, quantum models were sufficient to describe uh, quasi-realizations uh, with uh, positive uh, probabilities. And it was less an, uh, as an open question. And in this is the question that we answer in this work, is that actually a CP is not in G. So uh, actually we find a quasi-realization uh, with positive probabilities that exclude all possible uh, quantum realizations. So now I'm going uh, um, to give the, the, the details of, of our result. Uh, so we use a geometric approach, similar that for, for the one that Monraz and, and Winter used to prove the, um, used, uh, used to prove the, 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 that, that the P was not, complete, uh, not uh, including CP. And in their case, they fa found a quantum realization such that the stable cone preserved uh, by, by that uh, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, quantum realization, uh, they had some symmetries that polyhedral cones cannot have. And as I mentioned before, uh, polyhedral cones are those cones uh, preserved by, uh, by classical ones. So that's the way that they use uh, in order to exclude uh, classical realizations. So the question that we, that we approach is, can we construct a quasi-realization that excludes the existence of stable SDR cones? Remember that the stable SDR cones is uh, because in, uh, in for quantum hidden Markov models, that's the cones that, uh, suitable cones that are preserved. But the important I mean, difficulty that we, uh, that we find is that, uh, in principle, uh, we need to exclude any stable cone between the C min and C max that uh, I showed I show before. But there is, uh, this simplifies is actually if the C min equals to C max, and actually this is our line of attack uh, to the problem. So we try to find a, a quasi-realization such that we enforce that the minimal and maximum uh, cone are, are equal. Because in this way, we only need to prove uh, that, uh, that the, the exclusion for this, uh, for this cone. Okay, and it's sufficient to prove it uh, for a regular quasi-realization for a minimal uh, dimension, because then uh, all of them are related by uh, isomorphisms. Okay, so what is the, the cone that plays a, a role in, a, in our construction? It's an exponential cone, and it's just defined in a, in a vector space, a real vector space of three dimensions. And here, well, you have a picture about how it looks like, but you can think it just as the, as the with this is, uh, with the second form, as the, as the cone generated uh, by the p-graph of the uh, exponential function. And, he, and here you have the, the, the formulas of the, for the dual of the exponential cone, that is, they have some similar flavor. So this is uh, our uh, main result. So we are able to, to find a, a quasi-realization that it has uh, three outputs. One, two, and three. I one, two, and, and zero. So we f we find uh, uh, all the all the, res uh, the respective uh, matrices, so linear maps, and then we we are able to show that the, uh, that we can construct these pi and tau, and tau vectors with the conditions that uh, we mentioned uh, for the quasi-realization. That this is a, a good quasi-realization, and in particular, uh, we can check that for this uh, this uh, kind of maps, they preserve uh, the exponential cone, and actually we can compute. Uh, directly from the formula that I showed you before, the minimal and maximal um, cone, and we can check that they, they are equal. So in particular, uh, the resulting statistical process, it produces pro uh, positive probabilities because they preserve a convex cone, but in, uh, this exponential cone uh, is uh, it's not a semi-algebraic, okay? It's uh, defined through exponent, uh, exponential functions, so it cannot be described through, uh, through, through a number of, uh, find a number of polynomial equations. So in, the, in this is the way that we exclude the, the, the quantum realizations of this kind of, of process. We want to find a process with the same probabilities as, as our ones. You cannot do it uh, with a quantum realization. So, um, how the left? Uh, two minutes. Okay, so I'm just uh, quickly revisit the, the, the early proof uh, that was used uh, to, uh, to, uh, to show that non-inclusion of P in, in G. Uh, the, the reason why, and this is uh, with the, the first approach that we started our work, and the reason was because if the, this first uh, construction maybe was enough in order to, to, to show that non-inclusion of CP and G, if, the, if, the, it, if it, for example, it doesn't meet a quantum, a quantum model. So it, uh, in this early work, the, this process was described in terms of a hidden uh, Markov model, not in terms of quasi-realizations. But the hidden Markov model that they describe is the following one, so this, uh, this hidden, uh, this uh, this hidden uh, chain that is uh, that are these x, which the states are uh, just the natural numbers from zero to to, to infinity, and we have uh, this uh, the following transition probabilities. So if we are in state zero, we can jump with uh, to state L with a certain probability, and then if we are in a state, uh, for example, uh, L, we, we are going to descend to state L minus one, L minus two until state zero, 
uh, but probability one. And then the, the, the variables that we observe, there are, there are two, there are this A and B. And the, the, it's A when the state of the chain is zero, and it's uh, B when the state of the chain is uh, anything that is uh, not zero. So the, the ingredient that they, they used to found the, 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 that this didn't meet a, uh, um, um, uh, a positive realization is different uh, from our approach because they studied some, uh, 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 some properties of the spectra of the different, uh, of the, of the different uh, matrices of the transition probabilities. But what, what happens is that what, what we did is we took this model, we found the quasi-realization, so we found the matrices that I, show, that I showed before, and then in spite of the, that quasi-realization, we, uh, we could find uh, uh, a quantum one. So we find the, the quantum maps uh, that give the exact probabilities of the model that I showed uh, before. So actually, uh, this, quasi, this quantum realization, is, we can give it in, in a Q treat. Um, so it's quite, uh, it's quite a small quantum system. And, and we see actually that, uh, here you have the two maps for the outputs A and B, but the important thing uh, from this slide is that uh, the previous system, if you want to describe it with a, with, a classical, with a classical memory, you will need an infinite number of states, but here we can compress all the model and the information and describe it in just, in, just in a Q-trip. So, and just to, and just to finish, uh, we explore actually what happens if we perturb this, uh, this quantum model. So we add uh, uh, the polarizing noise to, uh, to all these maps, and then what happens is that when we add the polarizing noise uh, to these maps, the stochastic proxy that is produced, it can be represented by a classical uh, Hida Markov model. But then we found, uh, uh, we found a bound on the number of uh, states that the Hida model uh, must have, and a lower bound. And we can see that it's lower bounded by uh, one minus Q, where Q is the, the, uh, the parameter that parameterizes the, the polarizing noise. So when Q is one, it, it means that uh, we recover the, the quantum realization. Uh, the number of, uh, of the state of the Hamark model uh, goes, to, uh, goes to infinity. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, uh, the conclusions. So we, we, we saw that uh, hidden quantum Markov models are expressed in math to model interesting processes, like the one that, I, uh, that we show for the Dramanikari, Fox and Rabin uh, one. So then the other re important result is that uh, hidden quantum Markov models are not universal, are not universal so in particular they cannot uh, uh, represent any uh, quasi-realization with uh, positive probabilities. Uh, there's, we can think about some extension of our works. Uh, um, for example, is thinking about other, other cones uh, apart from this exponential cone. One, one idea would be, for example, to work with uh, relative entropy cone. And then last question that we have is can quantum models or general models be useful for, uh, for example, data analysis or generative modeling? So uh, we can find like some practical applications in order to uh, describe like some uh, experiments. So, okay, thank you. Questions? No? Okay, so um, maybe, I mean, uh, so I don't know much about stochastic processes, but the spirit of it here seems to be that um, you're looking at different um, models for these stochastic processes, and you've excluded, you've shown the strict inclusion of, uh, between the quantum and the, yeah. uh, the most generic ones that you can define, linear ones. So how, how is, is there a sense in which I can I can map uh, my like like these results to other examples of uh, strict inclusions between quantum and GPTs? So for example, in Bell scenarios, you have um, uh, strict inclusions of. Uh, uh, so you mean uh, for uh, for non-local correlations, for example, you can have like PR boxes which are. Um, Mm. Not realizable with a quantum model, but I mean it's a different picture. But. Yeah, the, the different picture. Yeah. Well, there is this. Um, you are familiar with this or uh, shown before? Um, well, for example, you can think about uh, the a completely positive realization. For example, uh, as a case, special case of uh, finitely uh, correlated states, mm -hmm. uh, which were used like to describe like, uh, for example, uh, some quantum states where, uh, with with, with a finite uh, correlation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, for, uh, for example, that uh, these states are, for example, not enough like, to capture like, uh, other more general uh, process uh, generated mm -hmm. by some GPT. Okay. 
But like, do you see any conceptual connection between those two conclusions and these ones? That's that's what I would. Yeah. To now I have to, yeah. to think it carefully. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. 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 Thanks. Uh, last last call for questions. No. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.